spirituality. Ito. Si madalas, tignan nyo mga katikisa pag nagtatanong, Father, turuan nyo kami ng methods. Hanggang ngayon, methods pa kayo ng methods. Ano nga sabi ko? Sa, kasi, sa kakatagal natin sa methodol, sa, sa, sa katikisis, yung method na yan, hindi na yung pinag-aaralan. Naging bahagi na yun ang buhay. Lalabas at lalabas na lang yan. Ano yung pang meron pa kayong method A, method B? Sa mga ano lang yan, nagsisimula. Pero kung matagal na tayo sa katikisis at ang dugo, ang nasa dugo nating katikisis, lalabas yan. May framework na kagad dyan. Anong sinasalita ng Diyos? Anong turo ng simbahan? Anong sitwasyon ng buhay? Yun. Kaya, kaya, ang, kaya ang nangyayari, bakit pa pwede pa meron? Kasi... We have four trained catechists to really depend only on the methods that we teach. We have not trained them, we have not trained them, first of all, to be truly spiritual, open to the Spirit. We must have, we might have trained them to pray so many prayers. We might have, tra we might have trained them to organize so many liturgical celebrations. But, is there the spirit? Because if the spirit is with them, they'll be not asking anymore. Turo ang mukha niya, turo ang mukha niya, magtapos ka ng sampung taong nakatuturo ka sa katekesis. Ikaw na mismo, hmm? talaga itutula ka ng spirito dyan na gumawa ng something creative, something responsive. So, the, ang, ang, ang nangyari kasi, andun tayo doon sa, yung bang parang uh, spoon feeding ang nangyayari. E ngayon, sa new evangelization, dahil nga ito ay batay, basis sa Espiritu Santo, sa, sa pagbubukas sa Espiritu Santo, hindi na tayo babaksak sa spoon feeding. We, we, lay, we eventually learn to be our own. Our way of catechizing. But, uh, as long as we are Rooted, grounded on the spirit. Okay? So, sa, sa, lagay natin ngayon itong konteksto ito sa religious education, sa catechesis, no? sa faith formation, lalo na ngayon, may K-12 pa tayo. Alam niyo yung K-12 na yan, personally, I welcome the K-12. Yung 11 to 12. Bakit? Kasi, from experience, na-realize ko, yung four years ng high school, sa fourth year pa lang na mararamdaman ko, talagang may, may, may talagang magandang uh, formation tayo na ibigay sa mga bata. Sa fourth year pa lang natin mararamdaman ang pag-uugat ng mga values na natuturo natin sa kanila. Kasi first, second, third, grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, ano pa lang yan eh? Nagkumbaga nagbubukas pa lang sa kandang, binubuksan pa lang sa sarili nila eh. So, dyan sa value formation na yan. Together with, of course, with the faith formation. So, pag fourth year, yan, na mayroon na kasi, mayroon na sa experience ng barkada, mayroon. So, nags nags nagsisimula sila, mag, mag, ano, kumbaga, tama nga, ito nga yung dapat mahalaga, ito nga ito. Diyan pa lang. Eh, kung K to 10 lang tayo, fourth year sila, gagraduate na, college na, wala na. Nagsisimula pa lang magkaugat yung values wala na sa atin. O eh, di ba, kung pagdating sa college, o ano, alam na natin kung ano, 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 anong buhay sa college, eh, walang ugat yung value formation. Eh, di tapos. Madaling masipahayo. Kung baga. Di ba? Samantalang, ngayon, meron pa tayong 11 to 12, within the basic education, na, 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 na ano, ng ating sistema, so, maabot pa natin sila. So, to 11 to 12 na ito, ay dapat maging intensified value formation. Huwag natin na naman itong idagay sa kahon ng doctrine. Ito na 11 to 12 na, 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 na meron tayong pagkakataon magbigay ng kasab sa public school, sa ano. Kung may pagkakataon, ang programa natin, huwag natin itong ilagay ulit, ikahon lagi sa mga doctrine, moral worship. This is the time now to emphasize the Word of God for them. 
Kasi sa work of God mismo, nandun na ang doctrine moral worship. Hindi tayo makakalang mag-compartmentalize. Father, ano sina, ano pinagsasabi mo? From experience. Word of God na may doctrine moral worship, saan kukukunin? Sa palagay niyo. Na ituturo ko linggo-linggo sa mga bata. And which I've been doing now, even at grade 7. Sabi ko sa mga katekis ng Archdiocese of Manila, na with the dati formator nila ako, sabi ko, hindi ko sinusunod ang syllabus niyo. Pwede ginawa mo eh. Oo nga, ginawa natin niya, pero ngayon, bago na ako, no? <laughs> so since since I, I was assigned three years ago sa parish, I see to it that I, I would teach one class sa public school. So I teach every Friday. Kung kailan wala mga katikista sa parokya, doon kami naman. Kaya yung mga katikista ng Manila sa Friday, nandun sila, nagpo-formation sa so, center. E din walang katikista sa mga eskwelahan. E nakita ko, pag walang, eskwel, walang katikista sa eskwelahan, nandun ang born again. Kaya sabi ko, sige, pag Friday, kami sa, sa parokya ang pupunta dyan. So this last year, my, uh, my, our youth director, our youth uh, campus minister, kasi nag-hire kami ng parish youth, lead, uh, youth, uh, parish youth minister, Lay, at saka ako. Kasi itong dalawa, hindi itong youth, hindi naman siya kasama sa SIFAMI, sa parokya siya. And then the three of us would be there every Friday. So I would teach one, one section ng grade 7. Tapos hindi ko sinusunod yung syllabus. Word of God. Anong Word of God, Father? E di yung Sunday Gospel. Liturgical. Handa mo sila para sa araw na lingko. And when you take the Sunday Gospel, nandun ang doctrine. Kasi nandun ang story ni Jesus eh. Di ba? Oh, lalo na last year, Luke. Ang pag binasa mo si Luke, nandun ang morals. Pag natin ng Luke 10, Hanggang pa, hanggang patapos ng Christ the King, yung section ni Luke niyan is very strong in moral values for discipleship. Hmm. At least, siyempre, ang worship, andiyan na yung isa. Nandun na yung doctrine moral worship. Diba? At, nandun ka pa sa Word of God. Pagbabasihan mo pa ang salita ng Diyos. See? Kaya, 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 kaya ngayon sinasabi ko sa mga, o oh, 11 to 12 ba, gagawa kayo ng bagong syllabus, o oh, baka naman CCC na naman kaya CFC na naman talaga ang kapasihan nyo. Pag yan, mag-CCC talaga kayo dyan. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko sinasabi yung tanggalin ng CCC at CFC, ha? Kaya importante pa rin yan. Pero, balikan natin, balikta rin natin at gawin natin tama ang paggamit ng CFC at CCC. Hindi yan ang primary source of catechesis. Primary source of the case is scriptures and tradition. And where will you find scripture and tradition quite, quite systematic in its presentation? Go to the liturgy. Kaya nga. ko na lagay yung slide na yun. Suppose, ang, 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 ang prinsipyo na pairalin ngayon sa katechesis ay lex credendi, lex orandi, lex vivendi. Bigyan natin yan talaga ng serious attention dahil, dahil yan ang talagang pamaraan ng katechesis sa mga apostoles. Lex credendi, lex orandi. The Christian community developed their faith, their, their understanding of faith, the doctrinal aspect of faith, through the liturgy. And in the liturgy, we cannot escape meeting the Word of God. Dahil wala namang liturgical celebration na walang salita ng Diyos. May katechesis na walang salita ng Diyos. Di ba? Katechesis mo lang. Pag hindi mo yung kinonek ang katisismo sa, sa, sa salita ng Diyos, hanggang katisismo ka, hindi mo malata ang mga ba sa salita ng Diyos. But liturgy will always be rooted, celebrated in the Word of God. And then, Lex Viventi. Okay? Yan. So, getting out of the box para sa atin is to liberate 
catechesis from an overly academic, scholastic, cognitive, brown spirit and content. Dito ko, actually, dito ko medyo na, na, na for the past, yung my, my personal experience ng catechesis sa Philippines, I think even, even, even other, in other countries, no? When we have put the catechetical sessions in the box of academic and scholarly presentation. Kaya ang general directory, no, i-distinguish niya eh. Ano ang catechesis? Ano ang religious instruction school? And this has been the practice in many churches, except in the Philippines. Sa Philippines, ang catechesis is equivalent to religious instruction in the schools. Dahil nga, wala tayong tradisyon ng Sunday school catechesis sa mga parokya. May ilang mga parokya, meron silang ano, pero majority of the parishes, no? correct me if I'm wrong, na ang catechesis are, uh, it is uh, for, uh, assumed to be done in the school the public school. Pero other countries, hindi. Kasi, they, 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 they are not allowed to do catechesis in the schools. E tayo kasi, we are allowed. Kaya, na, na doon na, natali ang catechesis. But, catechesis is, was never taught, no? Was never taught it is <coughs> na never plan, na sa skwela. Catechesis was born in the Christian community. And catechesis grows in the Christian community. That's why the general directory distinguishes religious instruction school in catechesis. No? Pero sa atin, given this situation, it's also, it's also a grace of God. At least, meron tayo, pwede na tayo maging sistemado doon sa pagtuturo sa panumbala tayo, sa eskwela. Sa eskwela. But, ang naging, ang naging drawback is that na-equate natin ngayon ang catechesis as a subject. As a subject. That's why faith of our young people grew only here. Grows only here. Wala sa puso. Is tayo pa naman, mga Pilipino, kapag hindi na isa puso, kinakalimutan. Iniiwan. Pero pag nasa puso, kahit mali, Tama. <laughs> Di ba? Yun, yun ang ating psyche eh. Yun ang psyche natin. And imagine, imagine kung ang katekesis natin ay talagang uh, natun natu tayo isa puso o lang dito. E di, ang laking pagbabago niyan. O, tanong lagi natin, di ba? I, I heard from, from yesterday sa ano, yung mga discussion, yung bakit split hmm? ang, kalaw, ang pagiging katoliko natin. Iba yung simbahan, iba yung ano, iba yung iba yung sa labas ng simbahan, iba sa pamumuhay. O yung sinasabi nga nung ano, yung, yung ating nga tagang, eto tayo, katoliko, tapos Archangel, ano tayo, di ba? Tapos ang dami-dami natin mga ritual, ganyan. Bakit? Ba't ganun? Mapansin ninyo, ang ritual, kahit minsan mali, tama pa rin sa mga katoliko. Bakit? Kasi ang ritual, wala dito nandito nasa loob kaya mas mahal kahit na yung pari yung magsermon na magsermon tamang tama maayos 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 dito lang siya hundag dito siya nakausap tapos after the, the homily father very good homily pero hanggang tong ka na lang kailangan ang dito eh pati ang katekesis natin ang katekesis natin kahit mga mga, mga katekesis gumamit siya ng kung ano-ano pa nga yung mga gadget pero hindi naman napakarating sa kalooban ng bata tapos hindi yan dadalhin ng bata pagkatapos ng eskwela. Kaya nga gusto natin new evangelization sa konteksto ng katekesis lumayo tayo dito. Systematic still. Ha? Hindi ko sinasabi academic, scholastic, cognitive, cerebral. Pero systematic, nandiyan lagi yan. Maayos. Kasi parang maayos na intindihan. At naisa sa puso. So you go back to Jesus. How did Jesus catechize? How did Jesus evangelize? Look at 
what, how the Gospels present Jesus. Oftentimes, Jesus, when he speaks, he addresses the people at the level of the heart. Kaya si Saint John na napakatayo ng kanyang gospel, na sabi niya, high theology, high Christology si Saint John. Still, pag iyan ay talagang pinagnilayan ninyo, makakarating tayo sa puso, sa loob, kalooban. Because that is the way God speaks to us. God speaks to us to our heart. Okay? Yan. Kaya, catechetical leaders, no, you know, I've been emphasizing this, kasi sana pagbalik nyo sa inyong mga offices, sa inyong mga dioceses, when you start now planning, doing syllabus, bear in mind this needed characteristic of our religious programs, the heart. And train our catechists to catechize with the heart. Dito tayo kulang ni. Malagad tayo sa, di ba, sabi natin sa NNCDP, ha? total faith, di ba? Ang um, total faith is believing, trusting, and doing. We train our catechists to lead the students to believe and to challenge the students to do. Pero we seldom train our catechists to lead the students to value or develop that gift of trust. Yun yung kalooban eh. That's why there is that gap. Sabi mo kumbaga, sa tama na sa katekista, masabi ko, ay katlong utos ng Diyos, magsimba ng linggo. Kaya class, magsimba kayo sa darating na linggo. Eh, hindi naman natin napakita sa mga bata, bakit mahalaga magsimba? Bakit kailangan magsimba? Yung sa level ng kalooban. Yan. Why? Because we have followed for a long time the paradigm of academic and, uh, ano, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can you say about, I, I think it's very clear, pero what about, the, we have a lot of academic uh, leaders, nuns or lay, who are in that, ano, na supposed to be can change. When you look at the say, uh, curriculum in religious education, always in the Catholic institution, it's the core of the curriculum, core of the curriculum. And is it that kind of ironic? Because you have inserted in the uh, as a core of the curriculum, and that's the effect. We have so much of an academic uh, concept that we have to deliver, we have to give. That's why, Father, I, I can relate with na, the reaction of the students. One time I have a student, no, uh, a father niya giving of cards sa amin. Mga parents na lang pupunta. Tapos sa punta niya, pagsak siya sa Pilipino, pagsak din siya sa religion. Pero she's an acolyte no, sa church. Uh, Nasiserve siya doon. Tatay niya, pero religious din. Sabi ng tatay sa akin, Sir, alam mo yun, sabi niya, hindi na siya Pilipino, hindi pa siya, ka, hindi pa siya Kristiyano. <laughs> Yun ang sabi ng bata, biro daw ng biro, kasi bagsak na siya sa Pilipino, bagsak na siya sa religion. So, sabi niya, hindi na nga siya Pilipino, hindi pa siya Kristiyano. But yung, yung concept yeah. ng being a Christian is more loaded in the academic side of, of learning yeah. schools na supposed to be, uh, yan as dapat mag-level off sa mga academic uh, yeah. institutions. And more on the side father, ng mga academic na administrators. 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 Okay. And that your your complaint has also been the complaint of many Catholic religion teachers whenever I give the seminar. Hanggang ngayon, ngayon pa rin. Pero, ang sa akin, I've been repeating, repeating this, kasi wala well, ako nakikita ng talagang significant change, no? Kasi kung may significant change na tayo nangyari sa Catholic schools natin, hindi tayo ganitong gobyerno natin. Huh? And we cannot blame just this government, even the past governments, and even the next government, the next administration. As, as long as we have graduates of our Catholic schools that have not assimilated the gospel values, hmm? Yun ang, and, and they will not be able to do that if we don't change our way. Ang sa akin, no? Sige. Father, teacher lang kami, catechist lang kami, paano, paano, ano, sa akin. Do, ang akin, do what you can do within your classroom. Second, 
do something, that something uh, some advocacy about it. Kasi yung nangyayari dito, sa, from my, from my uh, experience ng reflection ko nito, taon-taon na ganito lagi yung pinatapik natin ganito. Tapos, pagkatapos ng seminar, o may complain ka nga, wala naman tayong ginawang, uh, gin, gin, ginawang na something man, uh, a group or, 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 or an, a, a, a movement. Diba? Halimbawa, kung kayo man nandito, isang, isang grupo kayo mga teachers, na talagang nagpinipigay, nag, alam nyo sa, mga, sa, sa authorities, ito na po eh, ito dapat ang mangyari, ito nga no, kasi, yan. then the administration will be aware na hindi lang ito desire or na isang teacher, but it is the group of teachers. No? It's a group of catechists. It's a group of religion teachers. So there is an advocacy. No? Kasi ang advocacy lang natin, lagi sa justice and peace. No? Pwede tayo mag-advocacy mismo even in our own ministry. When we realize that, yes, uh, we, 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 we are we have been given a, a path, no? We are challenged to this new path, but we can't move because of the administrator, because of the people on the, 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 the people in decision making. So make them aware, di ba? Yun yun ang yun lang ano ko. As first start with you, kasi ito rin ang question nung nung Monday. I gave it to I gave the talk said some mother of life. Sila rin mga nasa mga CL teachers, mga ganyan, and then sabi nila, Father, paano na kami? Hindi naman kami makakilos ng ganyan. Sinasabi mong uh, liberate from academic, eh yan ang ano. Sinasabi ko sa kanila, start with your class. Whatever change you can do in your class, such that catechesis become really evangelizing. Ha? And then, second is, make a movement. Make a movement. Ang problema kasi sa katekista, wala tayong association eh for for an advocacy. Magkakaroon na sa sa July the 27th, we will launch the National Association of Catechists for the Philippines. And that and one of the tasks is advocacy and one of the advocacy that we can do uh, for this for us in connection with our ministry is this. Uh, as an uh, advocate for changes, no?
So this thinking, I would say, even even more than thinking, it's valuing. Tandaan nyo, Pilipino tayo eh. Kamerikano thinking yan. Pero sa at Filipino, valuing. That means, ang Pilipino, kahit na hindi mo hindi yan iniisip, pero mahalaga sa kanya, nandyan yan. Huh? It's, it's the, we, we grow, we learn our faith, not, oh, not so much by our thinking, but by our Valuing, appreciating, the old, no, father. Uh, the same thing we just like with the uh, observation. In in our place, the the Dabapo National High School, the Catholic is eight thousand students. And previously, we are talking about the source. Go back to the source. The dilemma we have is how to give to the students Bible for free. When in fact, the Bible we are selling only fifty pesos. But still, go back to the source, the students couldn't afford it because primarily they go for their livelihood. Kinuuna muna yung chan bago ang puso at ang isipan. E ba paano may bibigyan ang Biblia? Nandi free, nandi nga pwede hindi free. So how can the Bible be given for free and tell the students, go back to the source? When in fact they don't have uh, something on the stomach. Then, yun ang una. We cannot give the Bible for free and we don't have the source to feed their stomach first. Unlike the other religion, they give for free feeding, free rights, free everything. And, and that's, that's the part of the catechism. And we can get the source also. And to give the source. Before I answer, sige, Dr. Nati, kasama ka na dito, ha? Secretary ka lang ngayon. <laughs> Advertisement na yan. Uh, this, 
the skills that we're talking about is skills in critical thinking, is skills in trying to find out which is right, which is wrong, which is Christian and which is popular, but it is not Christian. No? Uh, uh, the, the skill to make a wise choice, wise choice based on your identity. What is your identity? Yan ang nakuha natin ng first day. Your identity is you're a Christian. So if you're a Christian, you have to be different. No, you don't have to always go with the tide, etc., etc. But there are exercises in the different levels that we can uh, we can come up with. So grade one will be different from grade two, etc. Sorry, Father, if I start talking, I'll talk forever. Okay. Tak nakuha sa tingin. Oh, sa sabi ko sa doctor natin. Next time ka pa ha, ako muna. Okay. Anyway, all right. So, but anyway, uh, good you, you brought out things na gayan. Skills. Skills in integrating life and faith. Skills in uh, uh, we're giving value to Momo, uh, to our faith, our gospel values, then to the values of the world. Yan yung mga skills. No? Skills in uh, being sensitive to the poor. Skills in being, in being uh, exemplary or taking the, taking the, the, the courage to... Uh, to lead your classmates, etc. Those are the skills. Kasi tandaan natin na sa religious education, sa catechism, life skills nga ang ating tawag dyan. Hindi tayo, hindi tayo psychomotor eh. Life skills. Okay. But Christian life skills. Okay. So now, if we, if we uh, got out of the box, no, in terms, of, in our understanding of catechesis, and get away from this academic and scholastic box, then, our RE, our catechesis, will not be a subject, but a person to encounter. Huh? So ito, yung isa, ito magagawa ng bawat isang katekista. Ano ba emphasis mo sa klase mo? Subject ba yan? Na dapat lang memorize? O oh, si Kristo na kanilang dapat makatagpo? Huh? And then our class will not be simply a class, but an experience of a faith community. Every religion class, no, ideally should be felt by our students that hindi ito subject. The moment na shift na from mathematics to CL, ang relationship ko sa kasama ko sa kaklase ko, hindi ko lang kuto makaklase sa arithmetic. Kapatid ko to sa pananampalataya. A classroom, a CL classroom, should be a faith community. But since we are we are we are boxed in the academic na 30 minutes na meron kang ganito, meron kang ganyan, meron kang ganyan, nalimutan mo na yung faith community. Hindi mo ma, ma itag, ita, itatag ang faith community among the students. That's why I always, I always tell our catechists, first week, first two weeks, especially this Catholic schools, may, may oras eh. Sa, sa public schools yan na medyo ma, ma, mahirap pa, ano, pa, madalian lang. Pero, pero ang idea is that the students should realize that when a catechist is present before them, he is or she is not simply a teacher. He is a minister of the word. And the catechist should feel that and should be able to exude that identity to the students. Hindi ako teacher. Minister ako. Nang salita ng Diyos. Yan. And then, the 10 months of, will not be 10 months of activities, but lifelong faith formation. They should really long for Christ. Konti na lang natin ang sab, konti na lang natin iduturo, pero ang punto nun is, at the end of that one hour, at the end of that 30 minutes, ang mga bata, gusto kong makilala pa si Christ. Hindi ang katikista. Pero pwede si Kristo sa katikista. Pero yung desire, ito yung loob desire. Si Father Banayan, na hindi lang siya naintindihan ng mga kakontemporary niya eh. Just sweet. We studied uh, catechetics in uh, Lumen Vitae. When he came back, he provided, he offered us a way to catechize the Filipinos. He studied our psyche because he's a Filipino. Sabi niya, tayo mga Pilipino, hindi tayo matututo ng tulad ng mga Amerikano tungkol sa pananampalataya. Because at that time, 
our catechetical programs are all dependent on the states. This is our faith. I remember that. I even used that when I was in elementary. Na nung natapos nung at certain point, bawal na, um, bawal na importation ng kinawa national print it print. This is our faith. Sa mimeograph. Yan ang religion textbooks na maraming eskwela. Di ba? Until uh, we, we came out with, nagsimula ng saling textbooks na. Nakaka-problema, ang mga textbooks still patterned after American books. Hanggang ngayon, examine many of our religion textbooks. All here. But Banayad was insisting for us Filipino Catholics we are able to learn faith when we bring faith at the level of our human desire. Meron tayo mga sinasaloob. Meron tayo sa kalaman natin na gustong sagutin. At ang makakasagot ay si Jesus. Dapat yan ang matuklasan ng katekista. O, oh, example, not thinking out of the box. Methodology natin. Phase 1, ano? Kung kita nyo na, alam niya, alam niya, di ba? Phase 1, human experience. Experience is very okay. Oh, ano human experience? Life situation. Yan, di ba? Pag sabi ni human experience, experience nino? Bata. Tao. Okay. Si Kristo, hindi ba tao? Kailan natin ginamit ang karanasan ni Kristo bilang human experience? Yet, the gospel story is a story of Jesus, human, divine. Bakit kailangan tayo mag-spend ng, ng isang period kalkalin ang human experience ng mga bata? Eh, hindi naman tayo nag ng psychology. Hindi naman tayo nag ng sociology. Di ba? Bakit hindi tayo magsimula sa human experience ng sentro ng katekesis, si Kristo? That's why I'm telling you, go to the Word of God. Hmm. Ba? Kasi na-box tayo sa human experience sa bata eh. eh si Kristo naman tao eh. Human experience rin siya eh. And from His human experience, link now to the experience of the, of the students, of the community. You can do it either in some morals, sa, sa liturgy, whatever. Ba? Yun. Hindi hmm. mo kailangan yun ng isang oras talaga nga na dyan. Hmm. Kerigmatic. Ang kerigmatic. Pero siya, again, pag sinabing kerigmatic, kasi kerigma eh. Hindi. Pag sinabing kerigmatic, si Kristo. Hmm. Yun. Diba? Yun ang mga possible na changes. Na changes. Nang sa gayon, we are able to move from this overly academic approach to ating ano, and ride al or walk along the path of new evangelization. That's why, here, in the, in the context of new evangelization, we cannot emphasize so much overemphasize in the general directory. Good and total catechesis includes initiation, education, and teaching. Most of the time, because we have the, we have boxed in our our catechesis into te uh, what do you call this academic teaching sha. Iba ang teaching sa education, iba ang sa initiation. Ang initiation pamumulat mo siya, eh. excite mo sila, eh. si simulan mo. Oh. Education is palalalimin mo ang teaching, iaayos mo ang pagkakaunawa, systematic instruction. Oftentimes, we are only here. We forget this too. But total catechesis includes this. Para talagang magkaroon ng experience of, where we, I mean, we facilitate the experience of conversion. Because we dispose no, the students to the work of the Spirit in initiating and in deepening. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, uh, here this is one way of looking at the uh, catechesis in the uh, what you call this uh, 
context of new evangelism. So uh, initiation assures the person of encounter with Christ to take place. Education, you deepens the encounter, and teaching makes the encounter meaningful, intelligible, such the result is a faith experience that leads the catechist to be in touch and in communion with Jesus. See, pag dito lang tayo teaching, no? Hindi tayo nakatayin dito eh. Nakatayin tayo memorization. Hindi eh, that teaching should lead us here. Para magawa yan, dapat ng presuppose ng initiation at saka education. Okay? Kaya nga, the vision of the church on catechesis, o oh, na, kipagpagkami si Jerry, may nga vision of the church, okay? So ngayon, giving you now the vision of the church regarding catechesis. It is an integral element of evangelization. Madalas dito na hindi natin na We take for granted Catechesis is an integral part of evangelization Therefore, catechesis should be evangelizing It is not simply teaching Evangelizing In other words, it must be presented as good news Good news And then it is an ecclesial act no, It is an activity by the Christian community. Kaya nga, dito, laging pinapresent nila the catechumenal process as the model and inspiration of catechesis because the catechumenal process is always grounded on the Christian community. Yeah. And then, it's for all ages, in particular, the baptized adults. Ito pa ito. Ang box, uh, kinahon natin ang ating sarili, ang ating pag-iisip, ang catechesis para sa K to 6. Meron yung 7 to 10, pag may oras. 11 to 12, titignan pa natin. Kasi bago lang. After that, wala na. So, ang susunod na katechesis, kung ikakasal, kung magpapakasal. Pag wala, sa libing na lang. Pero, bakalikan natin ang kasaysayan ng simbahan ang katechesis ay nagsimula sa mga adults. Children's catechesis came, became popular only after the infant baptism was popularized by Augustine. Before Augustine, catechesis was directed to adults. And then the catechized adults now catechized children at home. Na ngayon, Sa sitwasyon natin, wala to. Kasi, wala nang pamilyang nag, nag, ano dito, nag, nag tataguyod dito eh. May, may OFW na, marami single mom, single parents, ano, yun ang sitwasyon natin ngayon. Ba? Kaya, sa akin, oh, dahil given that situation, ano gagawin na ba ng simbahan? Huwag lang tayong umasa sa eskwela. Parishes, should start opening itself to organize catechesis within the parish, Father Malayo, within the BECs, and within the neighborhoods and families. Matrabaho, pero, if you want to, to, to go to this new evangelization, this would be the new methods, new expression, new form. Catholic schools, anong, anong pwede niyong gawin? You help, you coordinate now with the parishes. With the parishes. You don't become sim an island by its, a diocese by itself. Kula na lang may reconciling obispo. Sa akin, sa amin, my own experience, our, the most kamakati is just next across. So, bakot lang naka-separate sa amin. Pero ngayon, naka, nag, at least nagkausap kayong mga mga kapatid na sa Alessiano. Year of the parish, we'll try to make a move that the school will connect, be connected with the parish. <coughs> so, important, kasi importante na maramdaman ng bata, they belong to the parish. Diba? Mahirap na nga sila makapunta sa sarili ng parokya dahil bila sila mumunta, nasa mall na lagi sila sisimba. So at least, Itong eskwela, malapit, malapit sa parokya, oh, 
will be an opportunity for the for the students to be aware of oh, existing pala itong parish structure na ito. Lalo lang na pagparokal school. Kasi the school belongs to the parish. Eh. Na, na yung, yung, yung student niya talagang galing sa parokya niya. Diba? And therefore, instruction, education, and witness. Huh? Teaching, education, initiation yan. Okay? So when we go back to Jesus, the second part, you ano pa nago? So nakuha natin get out of the box, you natin get out of this academic. Ano? Now we go back to Jesus and recapture the spirit of evangelization. Ano ibig sabihin yan? We try, we look for occasions where we shall, we encounter Christ. And the Jet the Sinod Father said, the church is the space offered by Christ in history where we can encounter Him. How? Where? In the Scriptures. In the sacraments, in fellowship, in the, the Holy Spirit, and in silence. Okay, so yan yung ano. And then, uh, uh, so to, uh, we conclude. Therefore, there is no evangelization, much less new evangelization, without this personal encounter with Christ in the church. Okay. So next part.